I'll show you how to turn this into this. How's it going everybody thanks for tuning in and joining me on today's video i'm going to show you how to turn a piece of wood like this into what could be your most handy and useful utensil around camp now this is not something that is unique i'm sure other people have done this before in fact i've seen something similar to this as far as the spatula goes but i kind of put my own unique twist on this so earlier this year in january before all the crazy covid stuff has happened uh, we had the texas winter gathering and i taught a carving class on how to make this utensil and from that class the people that were there ended up calling it a spatula so that's what we're going to call it how to carve a spatula the thing about this that makes it a pretty cool utensil is on one end you have a nice pot hook notch carved into it to get your pot um, up off the fire or off your little stove you got a nice contoured handle here and then you get towards the working end so it's thicker up here at the top and then it thins out so on this side it comes to a sharp edge that you can use to scrape your pots and your pans um, cast iron whatever you need out of it and then on this end it comes to a nice little wedge to where it gets underneath stuff flips eggs bacon pancakes but the thing that makes it cool is once it tapers from the end up to here it's actually curved almost like a spoon hence the name spatula so you can actually use this too to scoop food out of and it will hold a little bit of liquid so let's get started so to carve a spatula you'll need your block of wood either a maul or a mallet or something to baton with folding saw your belt knife and a pencil as you can see your block of wood can really be any diameter uh, the thinner that it already is the easier it's going to be because it's less material that you either have to baton or carve away but anything will really work if you're going to be using green wood, I will say right now as a disclaimer, the process will be a little bit different after you're done carving it. Just a tip or trick, if you're going to be using green wood, do not take it inside your house or wherever you live after you get through carving it because it will split and crack and you'll be very disappointed. What you'll want to do is slowly cure it in a way. So if you've done any kind of wood carving before, or even some of the shavings that you'll have from doing this project, take them and put them in a bucket. Put the whole piece that you've done buried inside those shavings in the bucket with a lid on top that's barely cracked to vent a little bit. And after about a week or so, you can take the lid off, check on it, look at it. Um, you can even pull it up out of the shavings and put it on top of them but you wanna leave it there for almost another week or so. And then once it gets to the point that it's starting to feel a little bit dry and all those shavings are completely dry now, you can then continue to leave it outside but put it in the shade, don't put it directly in the sunlight. Um, so you're looking at about a three week process. And even then, uh, once you think that it's dry, I'd still leave it outside. You can start to put it in the sun, but just don't take it inside. The air inside our houses are a lot drier and it will cause it to crack. Um, once it's completely dried and it looks like what it would look like if it was a dead piece of wood, then you can uh, coat it with whatever kind of oil you choose. That's up to you. But today we're gonna to be using dry wood. So your piece of wood um, can be any kind of thickness that you want. This one's about 10 inches long and it's probably about two inches thick maybe. Um, we're gonna be splitting off a lot of that though to make it really easy. So first things first is take your pencil and draw the design that you want on there. Once again, here is an up close look of the spatula. Once you have a design that you would like, uh, I recommend continuing to draw on there with the pencil because it just kind of keeps you on track, or at least it helps me. 
And from there, we're gonna make a couple of stop cuts. First things first is be very careful when you're doing all this. The song part can be a little tricky. Uh, just make sure you have a good platform or a base. If you put two sticks next to each other and cut in between them, it really helps. Just don't be cutting them off the ground. Um, also, don't nick your thumb with the saw. So this is what we should be at. Here's where the pot hook is on the end. Here's that nice little contour in your handle where it flares up. So we have one stop cut there because we're gonna baton down That'll cause that to fall off. If we don't put that there, this might split and not give you that nice little contour. I mean, who doesn't want something that's comfy? Moving past that stop cut, we'll come up here and we make another stop cut. Now I went ahead and knocked this out pretty well. I got as close as I could to my original drawing and then uh, came back and put another one in there. Um, it's just gonna be less work. If you don't get right up here close to the end, it's really tricky. You're having to do some really finesse work with the tip of your knife to clean that up. So I try to make that as, as clean as I can, try to get as much material, and you can see it's right on the edge of the drawing. Then I went ahead and took my saw and cut this at an angle too. Because again, that's just gonna be more work that you have to do with your knife. And then I went ahead and cut the tip off. So we're already pretty close. The thinner that you can get this, you can see it's pretty thick. The thinner that you can get this, the easier it's gonna be. So after we go ahead and knock these out, I'll get back with you and I'll show you how to thin this down to where it's even less knife work. This isn't a traditional way to carve a spoon, but it's definitely a quick way. All right, this is what it'll look like after that. Now you can see we're gonna have to blend this because there's still a big notch right there. I'll show you how to do that. So if you come with your knife, so here's perspective, here's the pot hook, here's where that notch is. If you come with your knife and knock these corners off first and flip it around, knock this corner off, it'll make it that much easier to take this material off to thin this down. Side note too, when you are cutting this, be very careful to not just slam into the top part of this spatula because it could split this out. So just be really controlled, really careful, just go really slow. All right, so by now, this is what we're looking at. So I came through here, trim this up real nice. I still have my hump here. I need to come in and trim some more up here. And then I'll take it opposite way here. And then here's my pot hook. And then I went ahead and literally split it down the middle. Theoretically, this is what it was. And I just batoned it straight down. You could actually probably get a thinner one out of this. But this is the one that we're going to go with because I like to keep this a little bit thick because we want to keep almost this same thickness down here on this end. While you're carving, if you see that you're getting pieces that want to split out and break up, like what you're seeing here, just flip the piece around and come from the other way and carve against it. I think a lot of people get frustrated because they feel like wood's unforgiving and that they can cut off a big piece and they can't get it back. But just go slow, carve, and, uh, and make sure that you're watching when it splits up like that to not keep carving because it is gonna take a big chunk out. Come back the other way and break it off. I got a little carried away, which is oftentimes what happens with, uh, with carving wood. You just get into it and you have a lot of fun. And I went ahead and got most of the handle done. I still got a little spots, but I've got my nice transition here. And next I'll show you how to put in the pot latch and then we'll just keep working on it. Just have fun with this. Um, it doesn't have to be exactly what I'm showing you. This is just a basic design. You can tailor it and tinker with it however you want. Just have fun with it. This is just something good to do right now. Um, and why I wanted to do this video with you. It feels good outside and uh, it's fun to, to just get out here and carve on some wood.
if we've gotten to this point, we're doing good. I know that I haven't given you exact step-by-step -step on how to do this, but that's the point of it. I want you to learn and have fun. I want you to do what you want to do with this. Instead of it being an exact step-by-step, -step, just have fun with this. So, if you've gotten to this point, we've got our pot latch carved. We've rounded off the end very, very nice. We've got a nice handle right here. It feels good. All this is really smooth. From here down is done. The more you mess with it, the more you're gonna mess it up. And I'll show you a trick here in a little bit too, how you can uh, use something from the land to kind of smooth it out without having to use sandpaper. The next important thing to do is to remember what's your top and what's your bottom. And what I mean by that, the side that you first drew your outline on is gonna be your top, okay? So you wanna flip it and make sure that the bottom is as smooth as possible from here on up. And you might have to do some chest lever stuff or even straight up put this down on your uh, block or your stump or whatever you're using and just take your knife and shave it off to get really good clean shaves. But you want this as smooth as possible. And the reason for that is because that's what's gonna be hitting your pan. And you don't want this to scratch your pan or uh, be uneven and get stuff stuck in there. So you want it flat and as smooth as possible. And what's gonna cause this to scoop is we're actually only gonna remove material from the top here. So the part that you drew your uh, design on is a part that you're gonna start removing from the top. Okay, so I have not a lot of battery left, but I'm gonna to try to get this done for you guys. I thought I brought my extra battery, but I didn't. Once you get this to about this thickness to where it's a little bit, it's the same thickness as your handle, but then it starts to thin down a little bit towards the end. So here's my knife. It's about how thick you want it. When you get to this, what you're gonna to wanna to do is start from about here, come up real close and use the tip of your knife like this and literally do push cuts all along here and come back and do it the other way like that. And the safest way to do this is to plant this on your chest, hold your knife up real close like this and just use your fingers and just barely dig in. What that'll give you is almost a little channel. And you can already see, I'm already underneath this whole layer of fibers. So what that's gonna allow me to do is just take my knife now in this groove and I can get the edge and pop up and peel off that whole top. And what it's also gonna do once that's gone is it's gonna give me a little bit of a scoop there. And that's what's gonna make it somewhat of a bowl. When all is said and done, you've got your spoochula. To wrap up the last little bits here, I, again, I'm sorry, my camera's literally about to die. Rookie mistake. We've carved this out. You can see there's a nice little transition here to where it's like a scoop. And then on this back edge, you straighten it. On this slanted edge, you basically make a scandy grind. And you know that you did it right because you can hear that it wants to scrape stuff. And you do the exact same thing here on the tip. So I still have some work to do to thin that up a little bit, but it will, it will, it wants to bite. So if you were to put this underneath a pancake or a piece of bacon, it's gonna scoop it up. And over time, that's gonna dull out and you just take your knife and sharpen it a little bit. Um, I still have a little bit left to do, but I wanted to go ahead and show you kind of the final what you're talking about so or what we're talking about so you want to scandy it here just make a nice edge and then do the same here and then you have your scoop there if you have sandstone in your area you can actually take sandstone and rub that on there it kind of makes it look cool and it'll help smooth out any little hard bits or uh, little sharp edges it kind of looks like a sandpaper so um, not bad here's the original design Turned out pretty good. Sorry for the uh, quick cutoff and not getting to show a whole bunch. As time went on, I saw that I was losing more and more battery and I'd rather uh, end this video and kind of show you the end product than to uh, just cut it off and have to type stuff when I get home. Anyways, I'm rambling. Hope you had a good time. I hope uh, you use this on many trips around the campfire, you show other people. It's a fun little thing to make and it's really handy. So remember, get outside, enjoy the woods. Thanks for watching.